First, liver accounts for more than 20% of our total oxygen consumption of the body. So it is obvious that a hypoxia is harmful for liver to function well. Second, hypoxia induces a high level of insulin as described previously, which in a sense hijacks the liver take up glucose at a high speed, building up a glucose reserve. Hypoxia also induces a high level of a glucagon, which depletes the liver of a glucose reserve in short time, exactly opposing the role of a high level insulin. This process is obviously adding tremendous burden to liver. Meanwhile, at a high insulin level, liver may take up too much glucose, part of which has to be transformed to fat, which accumulates to form fatty liver. Thirdly, hypoxia causes the generation of a huge amount of a metabolite inter metabolic intermediaries across the body, part of which end up entering the liver to produce glucose, which in turn is released to blood again. This is extra burden to liver. Think about it. If sufficient oxygen is supplied at the first place, the biofuels like glucose and the fat are fully oxidized to turn out water and carbon dioxide. Then there won't be any metabolic intermediaries produced, and neither this extra pathway of metabolic intermediaries across the body returning to the liver for reassembled into glucose again. Anyway, maintaining best quality of RBC is vital to good shape of a liver function, and OTEC is the best choice for RBC improvement. Okay, let's move on to the next section, hypoxia on